guys, it's Adam and welcome to another haul video. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, another batch of items from the auction haul. Hopefully you're not getting bored yet. Um, there's some different items in here again. So, um, you know, I, to be honest, what I've been trying to do on these hauls is freshen it up each time and do different items. And that's kind of a beauty with, um, obviously, showing you guys uh, a lot of antiques and collectibles and things like that, is that you generally have a lot of different items to share each time. It's not generally all the same, uh, you know, board games, all the same toys that most people have to share again and again. You know, it's like a nice variety. So, uh, yeah, anyway, before we get on with that, saying about toys, I have got a couple of toys to share with you. So, um, basically, I was in Sainsbury's, um, I was having a look through the items. You know, normally I have a look at the Lego because Lego is where I'm quite comfortable with when it comes to RA. I never really uh, journey out into other things with uh, retail arbitrage. Um, but I decided to jump out my comfort zone a little bit and just take a punt on a couple of these Jurassic World sets. Now, um, I looked at a few of them. A few of them didn't have any margin in at all but these ones look like they might have been the best ones to pick out and again as I say I'm a bit outside my comfort zone here so um, you know I'm, I'm just kind of taking a punt on these um, but going off like completing solds and stuff I think I'm going to be fairly okay um, so we've got these Jurassic World sets this is Claire and Stegosaurus and a Stegosaurus there these are little figure packs by Mattel down here uh, Mattel there um, and yeah the highest I think I've seen this one go for is about 15 99 plus postage so from a fiver, considering it's RA, and obviously I might be taking a little bit of a lower margin because it's RA, um, I'm pretty happy with that, you know, and there's still some good money in that. There's probably still double my money or just over, to be honest, maybe seven or eight quid profit. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll get about 15 99 for that one. Um, and yeah, nice little set, that one. And then finally, we've got this other one. I would have bought more of these, obviously, but there wasn't any more of these variety, like this actual version with the Claire and the Stegosaurus on the shelf. So I just, you know, just bought what the was really and then there's this mercenary and ankylosaurus or ankylosaurus i don't know quite how you pronounce it i know a lot of americans pronounce it ankylosaurus but i've heard a few british people like uh, british paleontologists and stuff because i watch quite a lot of dinosaur documentaries and stuff i just i'm just interested in dinosaurs really um i've heard a few bit british paleontologists come like and what did I just say? Ankylosaurus or something, or Ankylosaurus. Um, but to be honest, I thought an Ankylosaur, well, an Ankylosaur is one of those with the bomby knockers on the back, isn't it? Where they swing round and they've got like really heavy plated armour. Um, so I don't know what. So this Ankylosaurus must be something different. It looks like a more of a flying dinosaur, like a um, pterosaur or maybe like a dino bird of some description. But yeah, it just um, it was intriguing that was, but. The Jurassic World franchise or Jurassic Park franchise are kind of known for mixing dinosaurs up a little bit. So, for example, the Dilophosaurus in, uh, I think it was the first Jurassic Park movie, maybe, uh, with the, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Thingy, Thingy, I know the actor's name, but what's the name in the, the I don't like to describe people like that, but you know, the, the, the chubby guy, you know, um... What's it? Wayne Knight. Wayne Knight is the actor's name, but I don't remember the name of his character. Someone will comment down below. Um, but, yeah, he got attacked by the Dilophosaurus, and Dilophosaurus in that movie had, like, his big frill and spat venom or something, and it didn't, I'm pretty sure it didn't actually do that, like, when it was around on, on, the, on the Earth. So, they're kind of known for mixing these dinosaurs up and giving them extra traits just so that then when they're doing the movie people will be more excited and more interested in the dinosaurs which to be honest a few paleontologists like don't mind and stuff and then a few of them i've heard say that they're not too into it but to be honest for the purposes of entertainment you know just, it's not so bad is it really but if i was a paleontologist i probably wouldn't watch the jurassic park movies with as much vigor because i'd be like well that's just wrong you know that's wrong and all the rest of it so but i'm not a paleontologist so i can't anyway i'm rambling too much so uh yeah that was those two hopefully maybe there's like 30 40 quid or something in them from like the 10 pound investment um so yeah that's those two anyway i'll get on with the other um more antique and collectible stuff so I'll get through the carved figures first because I've shown quite a lot of carved figures so people might be getting a bit bored of them. Now I don't know what bird this is at all, I haven't a clue. Um, I'm trying to guess but I don't know, I'd just be making it up. So it's some sort of bird anyway with a very long beak um, and it's carved um, around like there's this little base here. 
as if it's like on a perch or something. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've never had one of these before, but I'll probably just go standard range of 10 to 12 pound plus postage, something like that on this guy. Um, try and pack the uh, title with some good keywords. Try and find out what the bird is before I list it. And um, and yeah, we'll hope uh, for the best on that one and uh, someone will pick it off. So next, a couple of figures. I've decided to actually group these together and put them um, on the same listing. Uh, the rhinos tend to go, I think I, I looked at these and... Again, these are all over the place, depending on the quality of the piece. Um, I think some have gone for below a tenner, and then some have gone all the way up to, you know, loads of money, really. So I think this one's pretty standard. I think this would be, like, you know, around a tenner piece, to be honest. A bit less, maybe, or a little bit more, maybe, but around that sort of uh, range. And then, again, I don't think this elephant is, is particularly anything special. Bundling the two together, I might put them on for 15 to 20 quid and see where we can where we go with that, see if I need to reduce that any over the uh, over the weeks or whatever or whether they do just go quite quickly again making sure that i'm packing my titles with keywords so then people pick them up in search and stuff so yeah that's those two pretty interesting i've not really had any of these animal carved figures before i might have had one or two um but generally i always have the carved people that i showed on one of my other haul videos not long ago um so yeah that's those two and then finally for the carved figures in this haul we've got this rhino here now this rhino compared to this one is, in my opinion, much, uh, well, not maybe not much more uh, well-carved, but certainly a bit more well-carved than this one here. Um, you can probably see there's a little bit more detailing in that. We've got the tail coming around here, which is quite nice. Um, we've got a little bit more detailing on the face. Um, now, as I said about these rhinos a minute ago, like, the, um, they're kind of all over the place. Some have gone for really, really good money. Others have gone for really, really little money. So, pitching these, like based on the carving is quite hard you know so i'm thinking with this one maybe about 20 pound on its own maybe 25 quid on its own um and just sit there and again if i have to reduce i have to reduce um but then there's other ones like i don't think there's any sold for this price but there's other ones that are like really well carved a little bit more well carved than this one to be honest for like a hundred and odd quid so the prices are just ridiculously all over the place with these but um yeah i'm thinking maybe 20 25 quid is about right for that guy and as i say if i need to reduce then i need to reduce um but yeah it is quite hard pricing some of these carved figures um depending on you know like the quality of the carving and stuff it seems to be quite a, a hard thing to price but yeah anyway so i don't know why i'm showing you that one again so i was just using that one as a, an example against this one but yeah so that's that one again it just looks like a bit bit better quality figure than uh, that rhino down there so that's that one next we've got another mining interest thing we've had a few mining interest uh, things in, in these haul videos um we've got this uh silverdale um p nelson 236 uh colliery little miniature miners lamp you see a lot of these miniature ones as well as the larger ones i've never really dealt with miners lamps i think this might even be the first one i've had Maybe the sec no, maybe the second one I've had actually. I think I might have had a another one in the past, a quite a rusted one. I'm not too sure. I think I think I did, but I can't I can't remember. I, this is a problem. I'd, I've had so much stuff over the years. You just forget, don't you? But um, yeah, so I've seen these go all over the place. These miners lamps, like I think it really depends on the colliery, and it really depends on the writing on this plaque here. And um, I think there's like. Um, different numbers and stuff you're meant to look out for isn't there on there like different numbers and stuff that are under there like this one's 236 and stuff i think there is anyway but i really don't know with this so what i might do i'm thinking is i'm going to put it on auction maybe starting at something like 9.99 plus postage and just see if it goes up from there because if it's a decent miner's lamp or a decent miniature one then it might go up to like 20 25 30 quid or something if it's not, then it'll probably just get the maiden bid of, of 10 quid. And if it's really not decent, then it won't get a bid. And then I can maybe put relist it for like 4 99 plus postage on, on auction again. Um, but yeah, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot and like put it on buy it now for like 15 quid or 20 quid. And then it go quickly. I'd rather sell it on auction just so I know that it, it gets a decent price if it is one that's worth a little bit more because I'm really not sure with this because it's all over the place. I, I, I haven't a clue. Um, it seems that different colouries go for different money and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I'm just going to do that on that one because I've not got much knowledge or experience with these. And then, obviously, once I've bought and sold more of them, I can start 
you know, I'll have a bit more of that knowledge so that then I can actually price them uh, better in line with a buy it now price rather than doing them on auction. But yeah, that's those there anyway. So next we've got something I've actually had before. I've had a very, very similar version of something like this before and I actually got 10 quid for, for one of these, believe it or not. I know it's a tiny little thing and it doesn't look very um, amazing really at all. Uh, this is made of like um, zinc alloy, it says there. I don't know if you can see zinc alloy. It says made in... Is it made, made in Hong Kong? Um, I don't actually know what it is. Like, I mean, I know it's a cat and stuff, but I don't know what it's like for. I, I assume maybe it's just a little ornament. But it seems like maybe you'd put something around the cat here on this little... Uh, almost like a little plate or tray, um, but I don't know, maybe it's just an ornament. But yeah, so I'm going to put that on for a tenner because I say I think I've got a tenner for one of these, a very, very similar one in the past before. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do that. I'll double check on prices, see, uh, see, you know, if it is worth that. But as I say, I think it is. So um, yeah, so that's that one anyway. Nothing amazing really on that one. So next we've got something a little bit nicer. We've got this Royal Worcester Mischief figure and the number is on the bottom, the variant of this figure is 2914. So you might be able to see that in there, Royal uh, Worcester Mischief 2914. It's only in very small light in that number. Um, but this version of this figure uh, tends to go for around the £40 mark and um, yeah it's got these like blue and um, pink flowers. Generally what I've seen on Complete and Sold is there's like ones with different colours of flowers like there's ones with a purple variant of flowers, there's ones with um, I think there's ones with like yellow flowers or something, but this one with the pink and blue flowers tends to go for about 40 quid. So I'm really happy on that one. Nice little figure. This figure actually came in from the cabinet. Um, I think I paid 10 or 15 pound for a bundle of a couple of figures. So hopefully this will be my money back and then the other figure, which does have a bit of damage actually, um, will probably just you know, be extra on top, but I probably won't get a lot for it because it does have a little bit of damage, which is a shame, but this was the figure that I really did want from the lot. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty nice little figure here. And um, yeah, nice little figure to have. And I'm definitely going to be buying more from in the cabinets because I like getting these little figures. Um, I just like all the Royal Dalton figures. I like the Royal Worcester figures, Coalport figures and all the rest. I just, I just like them, to be honest. And they're pretty easy to list, pretty easy to, to find on completed and sold. So you're not doing tons of research with them either. So yeah, nice little figure there. I'll just give you a final little look at that there. So yeah. Finally, a little bit more Carlton from the Carlton Wear job lot. There's, I've not even shown you all of it at all. There's so much of it I could share with you, but it's just boring me hold, holding up a load of Carlton Wear on video, to be honest. It's not the most exciting thing for you guys or for me, really. So, yeah, I just thought I'd show you this one because it's a bit of a different piece. It's like a little, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a, not a dish. What am I trying to say? A little pot. Uh, it's like a little pot with this little uh, flower on the top here, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know what I'm going to go on this. Probably only 9.95 plus post, you know, standard range of something like that. Um, and again, as you can see there on the bottom, Carlton wear. So yeah, nothing amazing with that one, but I thought I may as well share it with you. I just pulled it out of one of the boxes. So yeah, that's that one. Next, we've got a large selection of various different, well, various different uh, sort of ephemera, I suppose. I suppose. Um, so these came from a different, uh, a couple of different job lots. There was an athletic job lot of like uh, athletic programs and stuff, and then there was a newspaper job lot which paid like ten pound plus commission for or something really cheap, uh, with loads of different newspapers and all the rest of it in and clippings and. Uh, these uh, also these like uh, royal wedding programs and all the rest of it. Now what I'm going to do on these is because a lot of these are hard to find um, in terms of like you, you might not find most of these on completely and sold. Some of the more royal stuff you might do but some of the other athletic programs might be hard to find and stuff. What I'm going to do is just either put them all on singularly at like a standard range or if they don't quite match up to my £10 or I don't feel like I could achieve £10 on certain ones of these, what I'll do is bundle where necessary to get me to that, um, you know, £10 per item, you know, because I don't like listing anything below a tenner. Um, so like something like this might not be 
a ten pound item. So obviously I could bundle this with another royal item maybe. Or if I can't do that, then I might try it on auction because there are certain things I put on auction below a tenner. And uh, see if I can't just turn this around quickly on auction for just less than a tenner, uh, maybe like four ninety nine plus my postage or something like that, and uh, get it gone that way quite quickly. Um, so yeah, anyway, this one here is. Uh, the wedding of Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret and Mr. Anthony Armstrong Jones, uh, 6th of May 1960 in Westminster Abbey. So, again, a little like a uh, program, and we've got loads of different information in here um, of the wedding, I assume, or maybe even of the, the people getting married. Um, and then, yeah, the marriage service. We've got something about the marriage service there. It's quite a nice little item there. Um, so yeah, that's that one. I'll go through these quite quick because I've got quite a lot of these. We've got a uh, couple of these athletics. We uh, these are perfect bundle, really. To be honest, uh, we've got seventh uh, of uh, November, nineteen sixty four, and I'm guessing this one's a week earlier, um, or maybe a week later. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so uh, these are special Olympic results issue. So these might be popular because obviously there are these uh, special issues with the Olympic Games results for that year in. Um, so yeah, I'll bundle them up and uh, you know just do a, maybe a standard range price on those. Or if I think I could get more, um, I'm not sure on price on these. I'll have to do a bit more research. But if I think I can get more, or I'd be shooting myself in the foot going at just ten quid plus postage on them, then I will uh, obviously do that and price a little bit higher. But yeah, that's those two issues. One of these issues. Um, I think, yeah, it's this one here, October 31st, 1964. Um, I was hoping that that would have said, like, October 30th, because October 30th, 1964, that's my dad's birthday. Um, I don't, I mean, I was thinking I would give it to him or something, but then I was thinking, hang on a minute, he doesn't really like athletics, so it wouldn't be a very good present, really. But, um, yeah, I just thought if it said the 30th, I would have, I would have at least shown him anyway, because it would have been his birthday. So, yeah, that's pretty cool on them two, so that's those two there. Um, we've got a few of these kind of type uh, ones, international athletes. One sec, I'll just uh, get the others, um, others of these out of this pile. No, it looks like there's only these two actually um, of international athlete athletics or something. Uh, London v Rome, London v New York. Um, and then I don't know what it says on that one, London v New York on that one as well. Um, so yeah, that might be a nice little bundle for sort of £10 or maybe a little bit more. So yeah, that's those two there. Um, we've got a few of these. This will make a really nice little bundle actually. Is there another one of these? I thought there was another one of these somewhere. Maybe there's another... Ah, here. Uh, is that right? Maybe. Yeah, maybe that one could go in this little bundle as well. We've got... Oh! We've got, before it fell off my lap, um, these News of the World, uh, British Games. Uh, we've got uh, White City Stadium, uh, 1961. White City Stadium, 1962. White City Stadium, 1960. And then this one's 1966. But I'm pretty sure it's the same kind of thing, even though it has a little... Uh, this one has a different kind of cover slightly but it's pretty much the same thing it's also by news of the world so this would probably be a nice little bundle of these little programs here maybe put them on for like 14.99 something like that and and see where i go from there and then as i say if i have to reduce on those then i have to reduce um but certainly it's a nice little bundle and for like what's that i'd, I'd be selling for like what 350 uh, a book or something that's pretty fair price so yeah, that's those ones there. There is a little bit of uh, tape repair or something to that one there, but the others seem in pretty good condition. So, yeah, that's those four there. We've got a... Uh, this might be worth a tenner on its own, maybe. Um, we've got a coronation of Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, approved souvenir programme. It looks quite a nice one, this one. Um, we've got, again... And it's in good condition, this, actually, for its age. I'm guessing it's 1953. Um, so, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um... Oh, look at this here. We've got like a little map or something. Um, so, yeah, this is in pretty good condition for the age. Um, so, yeah, I might be able to get a tenner for that one. Um, I'll have a double check on listings. A lot of this souvenir kind of wear from Coronation and stuff, I don't think it does brilliant. I'm sure there's ones that do pretty well. Um, but I can't imagine it doing brilliant. But I reckon I could probably squeeze a tenner out of something like this. So, yeah, we'll see on that one. Uh, 1959 Championships, Friday and Saturday, White City Stadium, London. A lot of this uh, athletic stuff is from this White City Stadium. Um, so, yeah, I don't know on that. Maybe I'll have to bundle that up with something because I don't think I could squeeze a tenner out of that on its own. Uh, where are we here? We've got a couple of school athletic championships uh, 
programs here. I think there's another one in here. I think I've actually got another one of these in the other room as well. So again, I'll either sell these individually or maybe do a little bundle on. I think I said, as I say, I think I've got another one in the other room, so there should be three of them. Um, and it's Yorkshire Schools Athletic Association from 1960s, these are. So I'm sure someone will, uh, I mean, maybe even someone who actually went to that uh, championships I don't know maybe someone would be interested um, who actually went there at that time so yeah uh, that's those two there anyway um, we've got this flood flood lit international athletics meeting white city 1956 might be one that's worth selling on its own that one um, I'll have a look at that one because it is quite an older one so that one might be worth selling on its own but if not I could maybe bundle it oh I could maybe bundle it with this one here um, which is this International Floodlit Athletics, London v Budapest, um, White City, 1956. So maybe I could bundle it with that one. And I think this one here, London's Meeting of Olympic Stars, White City, uh, Wednesday 28th. It doesn't say a year on this one, but it's pretty much a similar in a similar vein to these. So maybe I could bundle it with them. I don't know. Um, so yeah. That's those three there anyway. Oh, that one's a bit flimsy there, wasn't it? Um, so yeah, that's those three. And then, oh yeah, I've already done that one. So that's all the programs. I've only got one more item to show you. I will get it up now. So we've got this little um, framed picture. I showed a framed picture in the one. Oh, that glare is going to be terrible, isn't it? Maybe try and do it like that, maybe. I don't know how well you can see it there. Um, but maybe this has come out of a, I don't know, probably not a newspaper or something, but maybe it's come out of a book or something because... It's got down here, I don't know if you can see, it's got this like writing down here. Because some, sometimes what happens with these like um, pictures or prints is like people take them out of books or they take them out of, I don't know, newspapers and stuff and then we frame them in these frames. Um, so I don't know whether this has been taken out of book or something, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe it's just, you know, an original print like that, just been put in like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's got um, stag hunting. So it's a little st scene of some people stag hunting. Um, you know, these tent and don't, they don't go for that much money in my experience. Of course, there's probably ones that do go for decent money. I'm trying to get that glare right, but it keeps coming back on. Um, so yeah, in my experience, I've not generally got a lot of money for these. I think one of these, or a very similar one of these, actually sold like yesterday. Um, so yeah, I've, I've generally only got, I think the most I've ever got for something like this is about 19 99 plus postage, which to be honest, for what it is, is pretty good. Um, but a lot of things, a lot of these I've also got, you know, sort of like 9 95 plus postage or 14 99 plus postage. So... Maybe I could shoot for 19.99 on this, and um, obviously then it might go, or I might need to reduce to 14.99, and it should hopefully go at 14.99. Um, but yeah, so that's something pretty standard. But I thought I would uh, show that to you as well. I got a few different prints. I think there's still some more prints uh, down at the lockup as well, so I might share with you a few more of them, um, and you know see if there's any decent ones in there. But yeah, so that's that one anyway. So we will end on that item, guys. It's been another long one. Um, oh yeah, I didn't even say you should have got yourself a cup of tea at the start of the video, but anyway, I always forget to say that. Um, and yeah, I will leave it there, guys. If you enjoyed the video, then please do subscribe to the channel. If you liked the video, then please do like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, or queries, then do drop them down below in the comments section. And I will see you in the next one, guys. So I'll see you very soon.